This is the Crease Cast. All right, everybody. Welcome. It's another episode of the Crease Cast with your boy, Cody Stevenson, and the man who built the place, Lachlan Urban. Lachlan, we have a jam packed show because a lot of stuff has gone down in the hockey world, the Canucks world, and importantly, most importantly of all, the Crease Cast world. Because not only. Not only were you picked for the Botchford Project. But again. We no, entered. No, no, again. Yeah. For the yeah. second time, no, because no. Your, your first time went so badly, they were like, let's, let's like, Oh, God, we need to this give guy. this guy. This guy did so badly. We really need yeah. to give this him another go. This guy sucks go. so much. We need to do over. Because we need to prove that it's, right not, that it's not a disaster. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> no. the intern, the new producer of the show, co-host on the Friday show, it's Jacob New, the most recent recipient of the Botchford Project Fellowship Mentorship Program. Jacob, thank you for joining us. Uh, to start no worries, show, guys. Because we're very proud of you. I especially am thank so you. proud of yes. this team. I, I, <laughs> I didn't think this would be such an emotional moment for you, Cody. Like it, It's been a hard week. Uh, you should have seen it last year. He got me. He we we didn't have this one as prepared this time yes. around. Mm-hmm. But w- but last year, uh, for anyone who listened to the show last year as well, uh, when I got the Bodge for Project, Cody did like got put up streamers and stuff in his house and everything <laughs> with like it is your Botchford project, and it oh, was one. It was a wonderful moment. Awesome. I think that would come up. I think if we ever do like a best of the Crease Cast, that would be like one of the main like clips from the show because it was such a it was a it was a very nice moment and yeah we're really excited that you have also yeah, been you're picked. carrying on the legacy of the uh crease cast's ability to have a host um applied or not applied selected for the uh watcher project i mean technically i wasn't a part of the show when i was selected but i joined the show like i don't know three months later two months later whatever it was yeah mm-hmm. about there. Yeah. So, kind of, oh wait no wasn't it a year later Oh yeah, you're right because it was uh, yeah. you are one of the because did you go um like the in like 2020 before the the pandemic or did you yeah, go yeah. in 2019 before we I went to, I went 2019 coming. like one of the okay. final like pre pandemic games which feels like a decade ago so God. yeah it was yeah. a year before I joined the show but I mean mm-hmm. because the pandemic's been going on so long I guess you can kind of squish it all together and it's basically like I have been a part of the show since the very beginning I wasn't there as a host or a voice or anything, but it was there in spirit. Yes. And... The, the crease cast truly took off when, when Cody joined in. Yeah, it really, January. it really did. It's my, show. I'm not even, I'm not even joking. And yeah. that's, that's completely true. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to boot Lachlan from this uh, interview right now while I take a coup. No, <laughs> yeah. It, it is exclusive a coup, yes. one-on-one. It, yeah, it's a coup. One-on-one. You and Jacob oh, just boot me from my own show. Yeah, it's the code cast now. Uh, <laughs> anyways, Jacob. So, Obviously, yeah. Like, why don't you take us through the big day when you found out um, that you were going to be selected for the Botcher Project? Just uh, give us a little rundown. Sure. Um, so that was yesterday. Um, I got up around like eight o'clock, and we, I, me and Lachlan had class in the morning at ten thirty. But um, I went downstairs and just had some breakfast. I didn't actually get the. I got the email later, but like I came upstairs and then I saw the phone. And I had an email from uh, Jeff Patterson and oh, yeah. <laughs> that was, it's a pretty surreal thing to just see, you know, Jeff Patterson, Botchford project. And I'm like, I think this means what I think it means. And oh, yeah. I, w- I went in and read it and it was just essentially, you know, that him and uh, Catherine Botchford were so honored to let me know that I have been selected as one of the first three candidates for this year. And, you know, I'm grateful for that opportunity. I don't know how I'll ever be able to repay anyone. But, you know, so far, it's been an incredible experience. I've had a lot of kind messages from people online. Uh, I have a really funny story about uh, Ryan Beach uh, that I I think I can just say on here. Uh, For people that don't know, I actually work at a grocery store that he frequents. Oh, hell yeah. And uh, I've recognized him many times, but I've never felt the urge to be like, hey, Ryan, I'm a fan. (laughs) So oh, like yeah. I've so I've Friend been at like show. yeah so you know I've I've scanned his groceries and I've worked while he's in the store and you know he messaged me just saying hey we're you know we're super excited for you uh even any questions you know just let us know but he's like I looked at your LinkedIn do you work at this store and I was like yeah I've, awesome. I've I've known you've shopped there for for some time 
That so, rocks. That was, so, <laughs> I just added, but I, I told them, I was like, I've always felt so awkward about saying anything. He's like, well, just say hi. I've next been time. giving I'm you like, free okay. oranges for years and you had never said thank you. Like, <laughs> so then that brings me to my, um, my next question, which is, mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty clear to our audience now that your article for the Botchford project is going to be about the eating habits of the Canucks analytics department. So why don't you tell us? <laughs> What what can fans expect Ryan Beach to order from the grocery store on a day to day? Oh, I mean, man. okay, I, I'm not going to get oh, into boy. any details. I can just say, from what I remember, is that it's there are healthy. he is a fan of PC products. And Good that's for just, him. Yeah, and you know, PC is awesome for yeah, anyone that I says agree. otherwise. I don't like it. So yeah, <laughs> our, that, you know, that's I mean, all you're, I can but say you're about paid that. by PC clearly, so you can't. I don't know I, if we can trust. I am you not on that a PC opinion. shell. I'm not a PC this shell. You don't I have like a brand deal. You don't have a brand deal with PC yet. No. Yeah, if how come you're not sponsored do, by PC? I, that's a great question. I I drink so much of their cold brew. I am shocked they have not. <laughs> you're addicted this to the podcast. cold brew. I'm addicted to the sparkling water. This is a PC podcast this is, and not wait, pc in the other pc is, way well the yes, politically we're, we're correct both. president's we're both. choice podcast <laughs> yeah pc pc cc oh the, wow the cccp <laughs> oh <laughs> there are. we go that's <laughs> a podcast which, I can get behind. Is, which is definitely not an acronym for anything else i that's, just came up with that no one that's else how did. we get shut down real quick <laughs> yes um so i don't know if uh you're technically allowed to spoil any details but do you know what game you're going to be uh going for uh the botry project uh at this point all i can say is that um it hasn't been decided just because of those postponements. My right. thought is that, you know, I I think it's okay for me to say it will probably be a game in February. I think they're going to okay. try that, even if it is at 50%. Um, either way, any game day experience is just an incredible thing to go with. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, so it'll probably be sometime in February for one of their home dates. And uh, have you ever been to like a Rogers Arena to cover a game before? Never to cover a game. I've been oh, there yeah. multiple times for just to see a game as a fan. I think I've been there twice this year so far. So I, correct I me actually if I'm, correct sorry, me if I'm wrong, ahead. but I, oh yeah, I, I think you're also, this would be also can, your first just press a box experience ever. Like, yeah. So you'll be in the yeah. Clarissa or rash boat there. Pretty much first ever press coverage. Press what experience a, there. what a great, oh, yeah. what a great first one. You get to say forever that your first press experience was covering an NHL game. That's a, yeah. that's a, that's e a rare, that, that was me that's too, a rare dude. one. There you go. <laughs> I hope, there wait, you go. Where's my camera? Yeah. There it is. Okay. There it is. That's that's a, yeah. Yeah. Boom. Right there. there we go. There we go. <laughs> that's beautiful. Um, well, the crease cast is obviously very excited. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, Do it. we're at, we're we're super we're super excited for you to go. Obviously, you've talked to both of us like when you were doing your submission and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's we're 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 really ex and along with everybody else. The one thing we're always like Cody and I are always like, God, we're gonna like people are gonna think we're like somehow like getting people in, like getting Chris <laughs> cast people in, even though we help anybody who asks kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. You know, with yeah. the with the pro with the program and whatnot. But like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's really exciting that you're gonna get to go cover your first game. Hopefully, you get. Hopefully you get an experience. You're going to get an experience for sure. That's different from mine. You'll probably end up like somewhere almost like a hybrid of what Cody got and yeah. what I got where, yeah. uh, you know, cause you're not going to, cause like, for example, like mine was obvious, like we weren't sitting in the normal press box uh, yeah. for mine. You probably will be because mm -hmm. there are, because there's still back be again in attendance this time, yeah. even if that is at 50% capacity, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're going to probably get like a mixture of the two, which is, good in which is good in certain aspects like you're gonna get a little bit a little taste of everything uh yeah. which is awesome and uh and yeah like the if i guess the one question i will ask for uh i'll say for like cody or myself here is like is there any advice we should be giving we should be giving jacob uh before he goes and does this uh have fun <laughs> have, have yeah, overthink it I was gonna. I was yeah. gonna say. I, I was gonna say this wouldn't. This didn't apply for mine. But I've heard uh, in the in the Rogers Arena press box. Yeah, during the second intermission is when they wheel out the desserts. Get there fast. I've heard that one. Okay, and I got, uh, I'll, got the inside word from you. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I don't be afraid to ask for where the beverages are because I didn't do that yeah. and I was really thirsty all night. And so oh that no! Was, that was a tough oh, one. that's funny. 
But also oh, yeah. I had like I had like a huge anxiety attack in the middle of the game. So like mm-hmm. I wasn't really paying attention in general. So yeah. yeah. Just enjoy yourself. Yeah, have I, yourself a great yeah. evening. Yeah. And, I'm, I'm uh, really looking forward to it. Uh I'm gonna be nervous. I don't think anyone goes in there just thinking like they're just all like super calm. I think everyone goes in nervous, but you know, I think you know, the first probably the first hour is gonna be the worst. But as it goes on, I'll probably be able to just, you know experience it and i'll ask questions i'm sure so yeah and, just and the like... good thing is this year too they i think they are doing the hybrid model where like lachlan you're gonna have the other two people with you on the same day right so it's like yes. you're not yeah you're not like this one guy know, the, only the wolf. one person maybe they realize they're just like maybe we should maybe, have some like other maybe they notice the cody yeah, they <laughs> like anxiety that. attack yeah. and they're like oh we better give them some uh some at least they don't, yeah so they're just like at least they have because i've already talked a little bit with uh the people that i've been nominated with yeah. adam and madeline so we've we've got a chat going and nice. i don't know what they're going to be doing for their uh stories yet but i think it's because they still have to go and get some pitches with some of the writers so yeah well awesome we're we're excited for you dude we can't wait and uh i can't wait to uh, listen to you guys talk some more hockey maybe on this friday's episode when i'll be away as i usually am Mm -hmm. um but yeah thanks for coming on jacob uh no worries please enjoy your evening um and uh yeah congrats buddy that's awesome thanks yep i'll see you guys jacob take care buddy i will see you guys take care sir all right all right. That was Jacob New, co-host of the Friday edition. Ooh, that sounds cool. The Friday edition. That is what. It, yeah, that, that, that sounds uh, right. That, that, that is what I usually call it. I think I, I usually start off the show with the, the your Friday edition Ooh, of of the. It Chris sounds like cast. a news source. Like really oh, cool. Like we're really professional and we're. <laughs> yeah. Speaking. We're, okay, trying. So we're trying. Before we before we get into like the Canucks games and stuff, mm-hmm. it, you know what was nuts was daily face off getting chris gear yes as like my new writer. co-worker yeah my that's new, uh, insane yeah. like yeah. of all be... moves i did not expect that at all uh yeah me neither and he's apparently going to be on uh canucks convo uh tomorrow or i don't know if they sorry i don't know if they recorded tomorrow or if they are uh i think they record uh, tomorrow and release yeah. it the same day because i know yes. they edit their stuff like yeah, and, and, split. and they usually yeah they usually they and they usually they record earlier in the day so they usually get theirs up like in the in the mid afternoon yeah. rather than like where we you and I like we're recording this right now 8:30 yeah. obviously you, after the Canucks Predators game so you, you and I have like morning. you and I have like things to do during the day for like <laughs> 9 to 10 hours whereas they're on that sweet sweet uh writer gig where they can yeah. uh, wake up Faber definitely and just isn't write. Faber definitely isn't uh, also in classes and which means Fa- I have no excuse <laughs> okay so for those for those who don't know, Chris Faber is, is like a, a freak. Incredible. He's a machine. He's, a, he's an absolute freak. So the, for, you, for those of you he's who may not know, Chris, Fa- Chris Faber, creator of the Canucks Conversation, like all on his own, he was just like one day, like I'm going to start my own podcast and interview players and whoever's in the industry and just like hit the ball, like ground running and blew, blew up the show. In the meantime, since starting this mega successful podcast for Canucks Nation, He's also undertaken broadcast and journalism school. On top of that, he was working Vancouver Giants games. He was working like BCHL games. He was working. uh, I think he was working so much. He was doing like he was doing like he so many things. He was already doing, I think, some stuff for sports. He was doing play by play for like baseball, too, I think. Like he was doing like he was play by play commentary for for all different sports. Yeah. And then in the last year, he's also added producing duties at sportsnet 650 on top of his other classes while being a full-time writer for canucks army while doing in-person podcasting with his new co-host david quadrelli over the last two years while also covering the abbotsford canucks live in abbotsford the guy is a complete freak and i know he listens to the show include, and, did you include that he gets up at like 2 a.m he gets up at like 2 a.m to cover prospects like, like, as well like, for the whatever reason he, he's, he's all committed the nicest man in the world as well like like he has the time of day for amazing. everybody and yeah. he has the worst food takes on the planet uh, he just does <laughs> there's so much that's like his one flaw his that one is flaw his one flaw. that yeah. well that and <laughs> If like I had any advice, I'd be like, man, you know, you don't have to wake up at 3 a.m. to cover Connor Lockhart. Like the guy's going to be nothing for the organization. Ooh, he has terrible point. Produ- 
Have you seen yeah. his production in his D1? I have not, it's terrible. No, I have it's not. like okay. It's like a sub point per game as a D plus one. I still if, feel bad just case. calling any prospect like terrible. Like I'm just like, oh, they're a kid. Like when I don't. You, when you watch enough of them, it's you, you kind of yeah. lose your hope and ambition and joy for the world. But yeah, shout out to Chris Faber, who's. Like we're setting free. up like we're about to bring him on, yeah, but uh, no, I'm we sorry, are, we're but... not. Like right. we just this whole massive introduction, and he's just not here. Just, I'm sorry. This, is, this entire episode is just called tire pumping. Like it's just, oh yeah, because <laughs> like really like as we pump up Jacob's tires because we are like really stoked that he got picked for Botchford Project. Like I said, we're all Botchford Project uh, fellowship members, and uh, to see another one of our crew like get picked, like that's awesome. I didn't even know. I mean, I guess I should have known. I should have probably just been like hey are you applying but i was busy but like i had no idea he was applying and i had helped a couple people with their applications so like i'm glad jacob mm -hmm. got picked because i would have felt really bad if some yeah. of the people i helped beat him out and i had no idea yeah like that would be like, pretty bad uh but even like with like yeah because i know he talked to me about it for sure like we were like it was like it's always like oh you know last year you were you were like god i'm gonna feel i felt bad if like you're gonna feel bad if i got didn't get in somebody else did even though it's yeah. like ah, yeah, you know it's like I, yeah. Helped, yeah. I helped more people when you applied and there was like only you know two slots three, spot, three slots three. available only yeah, and no. i was like oh i probably should have thought this through because there's going to be like a hundred something people applying. at the, at the end of the day, it's like, you know what? Like the best thing you can do is not show favoritism towards me or towards like Jacob or true. something, because it's like, uh, if we did, I would want to get in on, you know, my own merit more so than like, just being like, Oh, yeah. you know, Cody, I know that I guy. He did this last year. I spent year. the We're entire I spent the entire time for the selection process for you. Just and like Jacob, sabotaging just, just texting, else. texting Ryan Beach and Thomas Trance uh, from my Botchford project night. Like when I got yeah. their phone numbers and I was just like, don't pick them. They suck. Yeah. <laughs> they just yeah, like, no. uh, who is this? You just, you, you just like, you just absolutely like, yeah, you just skewer us. You like you're like, skewer they're, your guys uh, like applications. They're, uh, yeah. he's, uh, he steals things. Uh, <laughs> like Lachlan. <laughs> oh, that guy steals things. Like, yeah. uh, I went to his careful. house and my money just went missing. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened. Uh, total womanizer. Uh, just yeah. the, uh, Huge. doesn't tip deadbeat uh, dad for sure yeah he, oh yeah he, he has, uh, left his kid at legitimate illegitimate children yeah, yeah like yeah. that like that was all and that's <laughs> just a tuesday for that guy like <laughs> you just like you just destroy yeah. us um Anyways. you know who else you know who else you know who did get destroyed today was uh david riddick <laughs> a rough oh, go no. for david riddick again like just uh the canucks seem to be his kryptonite a little bit these days Wait, is that who was that for Nashville? I didn't even look. Yeah, it up. that wasn't UC Soros. Did you not notice the short? The it wasn't a short guy in that. I just, I just a... assumed it was because like they were tired, and he was just like, I don't know. No, they're just no, playing, like so crap because they're tired. I will say the Predators <laughs> like the way their masks are designed and stuff. They do, and like I feel like I can tell a lot of goaltenders apart just based on their equipment. Mm -hmm. uh with like riddick and that i was like oh he actually does kind of look a little bit like saros just because they're all of their like equip predators equipment is very similar looking right um but like you could tell just like a couple different things like he was just a little obviously a little bit taller some of the ways he was standing in the net i'm like oh that's a bit of that's that's riddick Fair. um but overall yeah they're coming off a of back-to-back like so uh and saros had played last night canucks catching them tired a little bit um overall the canucks put out a like they they had a couple iffy like sections here and there mm -hmm. they had a they weren't like it wasn't a full 60 for them by any stretch uh especially late late stages of the third period there were a couple points there where it was like ooh, they're not looking super good they ended up i think what i think three of their goals were in the third period so it kind of looked like they were having a good a good go yeah. there but like it, it was far and few between like those goals were the like the few big plays they made in that third period and they kind of came out of it because uh Demko stood in his head in the late stages there. I think I think yeah, I think it was a case of like this this always happens in the hockey games where a team gets out to a lead in the third period and the other team compensates by just throwing everything they can at the net. So like the the pendulum shifts to the team that is trailing than it does to the team that is leading unless you're of course the Florida Panthers or the Carolina Hurricanes who generate a lead and don't stop and just try to murder you with every chance they get. Um, speaking of the road trip, uh, Florida in the two games after the Canucks played them scored 16 goals 
over their yeah. next two games. And I think they lost tonight to Calgary or they're in the process of losing to Calgary. Right yeah, they're now. losing five to one with five with five minutes to go, which is honestly shocking. Considering that is I shocking. Think, I think they had absolutely destroyed Calgary like the week before the Canucks or maybe even like a few days. Before I think they was, played Vancouver. I think it they was, won six to five or something like that. It was like yeah. competitive, but it was like I think it was a case of Florida got it, out to like a huge lead and then just kind and of then Calgary padded the stats a little bit back. in, the, in yeah. garbage time. Yeah, that was kind of how that went. The Panthers are the Panthers are, are are an absolute unit of a team, like a complete juggernaut. They're so well built, they're so well designed. Tampa is obviously Tampa, like they're mm -hmm. the defending Stanley Cup champions, the two time defending Stanley Cup champions for a reason, and they barely like skipped a beat. Like they haven't even lost that many guys from the team that won those two cups, like outside of uh, like uh, Blake Coleman, uh, Coleman, Barkley, Goudreau, Goudreau, and Gord. And, and they Gord seem and to have Shen. not really missed a step. Really. Yeah, no, they look just as good as they did before because they are so yeah. good at drafting and development that they've always got a new guy ready to kind of step in. Like Matthew Joseph is playing a regular ship now. Uh -huh. I think last year he was kind of on the fringe, but now he's full-time there. Filling in, yeah. Yeah, and Carolina's um, obviously same situation. Yeah. Uh, to a to a degree, like similar in that Panther style thing, where they're so well built and they're just so able to take it to you offensively. But since then, Canucks came out had two games against winnable like opponents that I even said at the beginning of the week. I was like, they're winnable games with mm -hmm. with Washington and Nashville, particularly for the Canucks skill set. Yeah, and they did it. They got them. They got four points out of out of ten on that road trip, which honestly looked like it was going to be an impossible task for them at one point. Yeah, and uh, like even in the losses, like the three losses, like we're almost expected. Like you didn't, no one was like, oh yeah, they're gonna they're gonna win against Florida and Carolina. Like I don't think anyone ever expected that to happen. No. And while they got blown out by Florida, like it was it was ugly at one point when it was like five to one or whatever it was. And then Tampa, like of course it's Tampa, they're gonna do their thing. Carolina, I think they were actually holding their own pretty well until the wheels came off in the third period. And that's kind of the same case against Florida. Like they were, they were doing their best to control play as best they could. They were, you know, had a positive share of expected goals, but then it was just like, as soon as they, as soon as they lost the lead in the third period, it was just like Florida just came on like gangbusters. And that seems to be their MO is as soon as they get a lead, they just like pour on the gas. Like they are relentless of a team. And even though it's two and three, still a pretty good record against like a slate of really difficult teams. And I think they did pretty well, all things considered. Um, yeah. Nashville, I don't think it was that great to be honest. That was their, like, that was their worst game of the road trip in, 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 so, yeah. in many ways. Like it, like the other games, I think the thing, the difference was that like individual players weren't having good nights for the Canucks, but as a team, they didn't look that bad. They did okay yeah. in all of those games. Uh, the Washington game, they played really, really well. Like, they won that game specifically because they were the better team and they took it to yeah. the Capitals when they needed to. Yeah. Um, they had, again, a couple wonky shifts here and there, but overall, the good kind of game. And then today, this was again, their worst game of the road trip and they won. That yeah. says a lot about where your team is at compared to where they were, say, a month ago. Mm -hmm. Or I guess now, technically, like a month and a half ago now. But... Yeah. Yeah, they're, the confidence of the group is much better. And when they get up to that lead or when they get that 2-1 lead, it's no longer a case of where you're like, ah, but they're going to eventually blow this. Like you're not worried. You, 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 we've stopped worrying when they get into a lead and get into a game where it looks like they're getting just completely outshot and outplayed to hell because it's, mm -hmm. it's not there as easily now. It's not as easy a road to climb for opponents now. Yeah, like they don't get bowled over like they were back when Travis Green was still the coach. Like there, there's yeah. a bit more fire and like pushback with the team. Yeah, um, <laughs> Kyle Burrows apparently uh, decided to become the de facto fighting guy because I think he had two fights on this road trip, or he had at least yeah. one. Uh, yeah. The one against uh, Tanner Janot today, which it's a bit surprising because it was like it wasn't like an egregious hit that really sparked it. It was just like a normal body check, but I guess fighting reasons code reasons demanded yeah. vengeance and blood tyler myers fought today and that guy never fights like no. he's not he that's not his thing and he, he was out how. there throwing some punches no he really doesn't it's uh, really funny but uh yeah like that's yeah it's today was one of those games for the canucks where they you know they got when they got their chances and their opportunities they took full advantage 
And mm. there are like a couple groups that looked really, really good. Did we want to hand out the Infinity Gauntlet right now? Do you have a? a yeah, gauntlet? sure. Um, I think the the Infinity Gauntlet has to go to Elias Patterson for just like the body of work in general because yes even though he wasn't scoring to start the road trip i think he was doing an incredible job at controlling play and starting to show shades of like what he used to be like last year or sorry the year before last year um finally gets on the scoreboard gets scores two against washington scores again against nashville with like a heater this is what you want to see you want to you want to be throwing out the uh the John Wick, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back, Jif, whenever uh, Patterson has a game because, boy, does this team need him to be on to have a fighting chance, especially when, like, Bo Horvat's not playing well, uh, when Horvat's not even in the lineup, when Miller's not playing well. Like, that's what you need. You need a game-breaker. And, uh, yeah, so Patterson's my pick. Good for him for finally uh, starting to show, like, his old self. Uh, but what about you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if it wasn't Patterson, I think... I think I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to a guy that I don't think we've given it to all year. So I wanna. I wanna shout him out here. There's, uh, um, Yuho Lamico. He had a goal <laughs> today. Yeah. He's he looked good on this road trip. That so I think a lot of us laughed when Bruce Boudreaux was like, "Oh yeah, uh, Dickinson, uh, Mott, and Lamico. They're my third line now." That and was that was ugh. a bit of a hmm. I don't know if I agree with that. Like that's a some some logic there. But uh, sure enough, Tyler Mott comes out of the road trip having scored the most points of any player on he, the Canucks, which is just so high. Wild. So, uh, that's a great question. I don't know if the broadcast will ever forgive us if we go on a sell on a sell Mott uh, on well, a sell Mott uh, 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 it's, campaign. It's interesting because, like, I'll say this about the Canucks right now. Like, they're I don't think they're playing that differently than they were against Travis green or when they were under Travis green. I think they're just getting better bounces. Like they're not getting percentaged or PDO to death. Like when they, when they were playing under green, it was like none of the bounces were going their way. Pucks were never bouncing in properly. They weren't, they were bouncing poorly against them. The PK was historically bad, which usually just meant like there was no way you were going to win. Like if you're, if you're trending to have a historically bad anything, like the chances are you're just not going to win games regardless of how well you play. And there were some games under green where they were controlling play really well. And it just wasn't going their way because no one was scoring. Now they're getting the bounces. They're getting scoring. Uh, Tyler Mott and Yuho Lamico are getting crushed at evens. I think the shot attempt differential was something like minus 17 after the first two periods with those two on the ice. And yet they still ended up scoring a goal. That's yeah. the bounces where it's like you can get crushed the entire game against a tired team. But if you score one goal, then it's like, great. The bounces have gone in your favor. Yeah. And that's what they're benefiting of right now. It's like, they're just kind of the bounces are kind of going their way. How long will that last for? We'll, I don't know. See. Yeah, but now, if the bounces are going your way, wouldn't you want to sell high? I'm, I'm sorry, broadcast. If you are listening to this, oh no. If if the bounces are going Tyler Mott's way and teams are calling on him, if you're Jim Rutherford, are you not going? He's a UFA. The chances of me resigning him to a cheap like one million dollar deal is zero. I might as well flip him for the best asset I can since I'm going to lose him anyway. Why wouldn't you do it? I mean, you hold Lamico, he has like three goals in his last four games or whatever. If you can sell them, do it. That's what your fourth line's for is you try and mold them yeah. into something and produce value and flip them. That's you go looking for the Carter Verhages. That's what you that's what you exactly. You flip that... them for picks or for some guy who you can slot into your third line or fourth line in the future who's younger, cheaper, on a longer contract or whatever, and produces. Um, that's kind of like what Tampa and Carolina did, but for different positions. Tampa did it for their forward group where they lost Gord, Barclay, Grudrow, and Blake Coleman. So what did they do? They replaced it with three uh, like really decent forwards in uh, Belmar, uh, Corey Perry, and um, re-signing Pat Maroon. And they're slow. They're old. They're, they shouldn't be good, but they produce. They're doing fine. Yeah. Uh, Carolina Most for defense did the exact same thing. Instead, they lost Dougie Hamilton. That should have been a death knell. I think when you were reviewing God, or uh, doing yeah. our season predictions, you were kind of you were higher than on them than I was because I was like, 
I don't trust what they did in goal and I don't trust the defense. Yeah. But every bet they made on defense cost them $3 million total for four guys. And they have yeah. like the best team in the, in the whole league. Ridiculous. It's insane. Just, yeah. It's just crazy. Most importantly, also to re- keep in mind, that is also what Jim Rutherford's uh, legacy was in Pittsburgh for a very long time. Like the running yes. joke with the penguins during their cup. Buzz run. Fibbets. Yeah. Mark Donk and Buzz Flibbit were the two where like they can just pull random guys out of, out of their ass and, and suddenly they're 20, 30 goal scorers. I mean, even this year, Evan Rodriguez, is yeah, on just some guy. absolute tear. And that was a guy who I think was in the system from the Rutherford year. So he's been Yeah, he's there. he's definitely a Rutherford guy. And you know who's another Rutherford guy? Um I saw this the other day and I didn't bother tweeting about it cuz like ugh, I tweet enough. <laughs> but <laughs> you tweet enough. I, was like, I can't be bothered. But there's another guy that uh that was signed by Jim Rutherford like the final year before he left and he has the most buzz flibbit name like you'll ever hear oh redeem zahorna now you probably oh have no God. idea who he is right no okay. clue he no. has one Never. goal one assist in four games this year in the NHL? last year in the nhl what last, no no he doesn't year, last year he had two goals two assists in eight games with the nhl penguins he's like a near point per game player in the ahl or he's like a 0.75 no. points per game player yes and you know where they found him where? He was a 24 year old player in the Czech League, oh my and God. he wasn't even a point per game player. He wasn't even drafted. He was just well, undrafted on a, a, a UFA signing as like, like a, a random twi- UFA as like a 23 or 24 year old in the Czech League. He wasn't a point per game player, and then last season he was finally a point per game player. He was picked up by Jim Rutherford before he was fired and then suddenly was like a point per game player in the AHL and then half a point player in the NHL. And now he's like, uh, like he's kind of that tweener, like one of the uh, one or the AHL or the NHL. And he's just some guy. Yeah. From like a league where like if you're over, if you're over 19 years old in the Czech league and you're not a point per game player, like your NHL hopes are like, done like you, you're not gonna ever make it in the nhl so he's just some guy but you know why they picked him up because he's six foot six and 230 pounds <laughs> and he's just like some That's, big dude who just like just, happens to be like a decent nhl guy on yeah. your fourth line complete nobody yep it's cost so you funny nothing. cost you nothing to get probably cost like, you nothing to get him that's what yeah. jim rutherford needs to bring he needs to sell the mots the lamicos like guys that cost money and just bring in complete randoms yep. with the weirdest names to be the new Tyler Mott's and the new Lamacos of the world because yeah. spending money isn't working and just finding guys has worked for the Carolinas, the Floridas, the the best teams in the league. This is what and, they do. Yeah. And then you get to save money for when that big guy, that big ticket comes up that you can maybe get on a, on a weird, on a cheap flyer, like a Vinny Trocheck for the, for example, with the hurricanes where they got him. Yeah. For, they got him for nothing considering what he already was for the Panthers at the time. Like they, the there, yeah, lots of teams have done that. And yeah, like going back on like what Rutherford did in Pittsburgh, like, so like the biggest mistakes that Rutherford made when he was Penguins GM was when he got away from that philosophy, when he did things like sign Ryan Reeves to a crazy amount of money and then realized or, that uh, that was Patterson or Marcus Patterson. Well, did Marcus Patterson turn out? Okay. Did he not turn? I out think okay? he, I think he had like one good year for them as a UFA. And then they re-signed him to like a deal that like was mm-hmm. like 4 million or sorry, four years at something. And it just didn't really yeah. work out. Yeah. Whereas like the best decisions the Penguins ever made were like when they would get, say, like a Connor Sherry or a Brian Rust or uh, although I think Rust is part of their like main core kind of a little bit now. Yeah. Or like Scott Wilson was another one, I believe, uh, during their cup run years where like these guys where it's like, OK, we're going to keep them around for a, for a year. They're going to do their job in the third, fourth line, and then we're going to let them go to UFA. Yeah be too expensive or we'll flip them to someone else who wants them yeah next guy up i like and go next and go to the next guy and they did a really good job of keeping their um keeping their like bottom six cheap and like and fresh Mm -hmm. for a very for for a very long period there and again like it is the whole thing of they would somehow they would magically pull these guys and turn them into and turn them into regular bona fide goal scorers at the nhl level every single year without fail like you could you like you know how many times like evgeny malkin or jake gensel or crosby has been injured in the last like however many years and they haven't yeah. a beat 
it's ridiculous. And that's the kind of hope, and that's the kind of uh, mentality that you hope Rutherford's going to bring here to an extent. Um, and now, like, yeah, w if we're talking about Mott and Lamico right now, like, Lamico has looked really good. And, you know, one of the things I want to talk about on the goal that they scored today, it was like you mentioned that they're getting a little bit lucky on their opportunities here. And that's not even like, it's one of those things where they're still like creating their own luck. Like you look at how Tyler Mott worked the puck into the corner uh, against, I think he had like two predators, like standing on mm -hmm. top of them. He could, and like just trying to get and he they couldn't get the puck off him. And he throws it back and Lamico is just waiting there and takes the weird kind of quick shot that uh, David Riddick's not ready for. Yeah. And and that gives the Canucks the insurance goal. And even a case where Mott should have had a fourth goal. In fact, I've been backed up by the uh, uh, scouting the refs Twitter who tweeted <laughs> the clip I the clip I gave of that goal and said, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, based on our, uh, this should have been an awarded goal uh, as per the NHL rules. And I'm like, vindication. He should have had a, he should have had another point. So five goal, five points in uh, in a five game span, including that ridiculous between the legs goal on Andre Vasilevsky the other night, a few nights. That ago. was that should goal have been year. like you should have traded him like the evening he pulled off that goal. You just his, call up the Buffalo Sabres yeah, and send I'm like, the have I got a guy for you? You, like, you go to Florida or to Tampa Bay, or yeah, you go to Florida and you say, Hey, look uh, what our guy just pulled off. They're too smart you, though. They know, they know. I know, you they're, gotta, they're just, you need to find you the need, dumb jams, right? What? You got to find the dumb GMs, right? Like you got to find like... Arizona. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Arizona, well, come on down there. Arizona's whole thing is like, we're taking cap dumps just, just until there's no one on our books. So uh, we there can was... reset the uh, franchise next year. So we can, when we send them to Houston. Yeah. Like we're, we're it... trading this whole team to Houston next year. Okay. Like God, I sent you the clip yesterday of the, the crowd for a, a, a long weekend game. Yeah. In that was Arizona. Ugly. Uh, like to be no fair, restrictions on the audience either, right? God, no, 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 no. It's Arizona, of course not. <laughs> um, the Coyotes, like, and to be fair, Coyotes Canadians right now is not a great game. To be fair, but yeah. God, there was there was no, no one. one there. There were like, like it was low for Coy by Coyotes standards. It was low. Like what, that was yikes. What threw me off too is that. When you sent me the video, part of my brain was like, oh, this is like the the hour before the game's about to start. And it's like, oh, no, this is this is like, like midway through the second period. <laughs> yeah, this is midway through the game. And there's no one here. It's like, oh, um, complete aside has nothing to do with our uh, episode lineup or episode show outline. But if you had to bet right now, what city would Arizona move to if like it was a for sure thing they were getting relocated not uh just sold to it somewhere else like if they were re moving to a new city i think it's houston like uh i think the i think it makes too much sense for what the nhl wants like specifically uh they've spent all this time like getting the the, the divisions kind of lined up properly and everything mm -hmm. and getting them like on a on a proper geographical sense because like for a long time uh, whether it was for they didn't have enough teams, so it was uneven. Like the the Western Conference had two less teams for ages. Um, they tried a uh, the the Jets, of course, spurred that all when they moved from Atlanta, and for a while they were sitting in the Southeast Division. Like it was, I, it was, I was thinking those, about that the other day, actually. Yeah, and I think the NHL would lose their mind if they had to like do it again because if they had to find some Eastern team to send to the West because uh, yeah. the Coyotes moved to Quebec. So they had, so I think they like Houston as the best option because of the fact that they wouldn't have to take them to a new division. They could leave them where they are and it would work perfectly fine. Um, and uh, like maybe Kansas city kind of falls in that same line mm -hmm. of thinking, but I think Houston is the one that is the only one right now that keeps making noise about wanting an NHL team. So yeah. it kind of seems like they'd go there. I think I'd, if I were putting money on anywhere, it's, it's the, it's, it's there for sure. Yeah, I was going to say probably Houston. Probably, I think that's the like the biggest like money yeah. market there. Obviously yeah. they they can't go back to Atlanta for a third time cuz Oh, that'd like, be funny. It would be really funny because I've 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 read a lot the of Atlanta thrash say, coyotes. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> the thrashing coyotes hell yeah the thrashing coyotes it's just a coyote like treading water yeah, yeah. like uh, just a drowning coyote 
Hell we're yeah. always drowning, whether yeah. it's in whether it's uh, in red in red ink, whether it's the, in losses. We are always drowning. The logo is uh, that Simpsons poster where it's the cat hanging on the clothesline, but it's a coyote, it's and it says, there. "Hang in there, baby." <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, that's that a team. Oh, nineteen seventy six. Oh, that cat is probably long dead. That's a bit <laughs> of a bummer. Uh, uh, yeah, but, yeah. Anyway. We, we we're gonna sidetrack ourselves talking about Simpsons jokes. Uh, God, yeah, like that's... we did last night when I was uh, taking forever to write up my game recap. <laughs> I ended up finishing that game recap, having watched like four episodes of The Simpsons. After I was just like, okay, I got a, I got an itch. I got a, I got to satisfy yeah. here. Um, anyways, uh, Canucks road trip. Uh, they're now back home. They play uh, Florida on I think what's it uh, on the on Thursday, Thursday I believe Thursday yeah. like a, yeah, yeah quick turnaround yeah, against Florida fifty percent capacity. They they're they they finally relented because they cannot postpone yeah, any more realized, games for nothing. Yeah, the new schedule is supposed to come out soon, and it's going to be really w- weird because like Ottawa had something like sixteen games postponed or re- or moved. Yeah, like Some, they're going to have a, a lot of other schedule. Teams. Yeah, a lot of other teams got impacted way more than the Canucks did, and the Canucks uh, threw a couple in there just because they just wanted for, to. They wanted to um, in. Yeah, but. Um, I believe it was, I think Patrick Johnston was saying on uh, Harrison Price today, or I think if I saw the clip correctly, that a lot of their games are actually going to be rescheduled in the back end of the season. Uh, They're going to be late season games. So they're still going to get games in February. A lot are still going to be in there, but um, also I believe some of them are going to be moved all the way till what is it? Late April, uh, early May kind of thing. Like kind of like what happened last time. Uh, last with, year, but albeit without them playing the playoffs around them, I think this time I don't think that will happen again. For the pl- for the players' sake, hopefully, because for could you my imagine? sake, that was dep- that was. I don't think there has ever been a more depressing time to watch the Vancouver Canucks yeah. than watching them finish out their completely meaningless hockey games while there's some playoff game going on at literally the exact same time. I have never been more depressed watching I, that team ever. I'm just thinking like if you were like a, a Habs fan or like an Arizona fan who had all your games shifted to the end of the year, like you already probably weren't watching in general. Cause the teams have been playing like shit, but imagine yeah. like the Habs who have like sit like a handful of wins. Maybe it's seven now, maybe it's six. Like they barely they lost to the coyotes. Five. They lost to the coyotes. Uh, that five, other game. by five goals. They gave up to the Arizona coyotes. Yeah, That's God, terrible. Like, I think it was Andrew Berkshire who pointed out one of these teams is tanking on purpose. The <laughs> other team thought they were still competitive, and uh, <laughs> whoops, that didn't turn out so well. Um, yeah, like literally, you're just watching for the oh, maybe they'll get uh, God, who's the Shane Wright? Is that the is that the guy this year? Not Connor Bedard, Connor Bedard's too young. Connor Bedard's uh, then two next, years from now, yeah, or two next, years next year from year or now. something. Um, yeah, yeah, Tyler Mott, sh- uh, Con- Tyler Mott fan, uh, Connor Bedard. Uh, yeah, that's why you should trade Tyler Mott to a team that thinks oh. they're going to be garbage uh, in two years, right? Some team that's like fully committed to a tank in the next couple of years. You're like, here's Tyler Mott. Here's see, a, that's why I'm a three year deal. You might see, have him. See, if you're the Canucks, though, that's why you keep Tyler Mott, because he's going to want to come play with Tyler Mott when he becomes a <laughs> Canuck. When they magically oh. when they magically pull like, what was it? The who is the team that jumped all the way? Like some team jumped pretty high up the standings. Uh, to win the lottery not that long ago. I think it it might have been Philly. I think it was Philly. I think that was how they got Nolan Patrick, which we talked about in the last show. Uh, they got they won second. They got second, but like yeah, yeah. but the Devils the Devils still, jumped up like were, seven spots, I think, and then to get Nico Heischer. Yeah, yeah, and then Philly went up thirteen spots or something and like then, that. And and then the yeah, and then the Canucks ended up with uh, Elias Pettersson because it all uh, worked out because it all worked out. The one time it, that missing the, the, that losing the, the only lottery time it worked out for ever you. work out. Um, I wonder if they what do you think they kind of like this is a complete aside again like this we're getting very sidetracked today but if the Canucks had first overall do you think they still draft Patterson I think so honestly I, I think what I've heard is they were actually really high on me Makar I think they actually would have taken oh him. okay well that yeah. either way you're still making the right call in that case yeah, exactly. like you're still making there's there uh, if you're choosing between Makar and Patterson there is no bad an- there's no wrong answer there that's yeah a, because that's, you're gonna be fine either way I think because Makar also went to the NCAA for the next two years after. So in theory, like, cause obviously revisionist history, right. But yeah, totally. I think in theory, if they had taken Makar, they still would have been dog shit the following year and would have Probably. drafted Hughes. 
Now, but do they draft Hughes if they have McCarr? That's I think the, that's I think the they do. Question. I think you think they go full on with both of them because I think they would have picked both because they would have been like it, it would have been McCarr as a pairing would have been ridiculous. And because the the 2018 draft shook out in such a way where like the only reason Hughes fell was because Montreal, Montreal way over drafted Puck and Yemi, Puck and Yemi which and turned out Arizona. very well. Which turned out very well. And Arizona. And, and Arizona, Arizona uh, Barrett Hayton, who's like a which turned out very well. Liner. Like <laughs> maybe he becomes something. Um, oh, we we brought that full circle somehow. I'm so I'm sure a certain scout who might listen to this podcast, who might not, will uh, slide into our DMs and let us know what the <laughs> industry thinks about Pitt Barrett Hayton. But I'm not sold on him at all. I don't think anyone is at this point. Uh, yeah, isn't he supposed to be in the league by now? Like, well, he is kind of. It's just not very noticeable. He's just a guy. He's just he's, a, uh, he's just a body for. He's an uh, Arizona Coyote, coyote right and that's the most you can say about him. Uh, that is what that is what you can say about all of them, <laughs> which, which is almost worse than being said. Like told, you're not going to make it in the NHL. It's God, just like that, this yeah, is your you career. Are, uh, yeah, it's it's the it's the uh, the toppings contain potassium benzoate. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah, the, exactly. the team includes the Arizona. Your career includes the Arizona Coyotes. That's Bad. bad. Yeah, can I, can I get can traded I now? now? Can I retire now? Yeah. <laughs> you know what's uh, awesome? Uh, another complete aside. Uh, oh the Coyotes have a uh, defenseman on their team named Dyson Mayo. Oh which, yeah, Mayo has been a good player for them for quite a while, I believe. Uh, he's been there. He's been. He was good in the AHL, I think. For yeah, like years. he's been. And in now the he's kind of cracked for a while. Cracked the show gone. now, but yeah. um, his name. I, I don't know if you saw this, but um, JD Burke, a uh, friend of hours not of the program i don't know if he's ever listened if he doesn't then fuck him he's never been um, on the podcast yet so that's true and i don't you're really not a friend of the anymore. show until you've been on you're not yeah that's you, true he, that you're, or are you like you're an or enemy you're of messaging us about the about the show <laughs> yes exactly um but uh he tweeted out like the i think it was like some uh usa like inner squad uh scrimmage between uh, like two prospect pools and all the names like i kept thinking to myself like these are names george lucas came up with for star wars because they're Bob so Frick. like right winger so, Bobby Frick. <laughs> yeah, like they're so the like millennial. Yeah. It's insane. Like I was reading them like this this isn't real. There's no yeah. way. This is There's just 25 cadens all yeah, like differently. The, I think uh, the goalie was Gibson Homer, which made me think of I Star love Wars. That. But also made me think of when Which Homer is- Simpson gets fired from uh from the rate uh radioactive plant because uh the Germans take over and they're like uh we're now going to list off the everyone who's been fired. In alphabetical order. <laughs> in alphabetical order. Simpson, Homer. So I heard Gibson, that all. Homer. That is all. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, this, this is a huge sidebar to we, six sidebars we've taken within our sidebar. We we went we went really off the rails to so try and bring it back in a little, rain us back in here let's, a little bit. The, let's get back. One to thing it. I did want to talk about from today's game as well was the the Pedersen Hoaglander uh put calls in line. Yes. Uh, which looked incredible. Like they looked That's dynamite. Juicy. It was uh like and um for anyone who hadn't hasn't uh been listening to like Bruce Boudreaux's like quotes lately, um he did give a he gave a pretty spicy one about Nils Hoaglander, uh specifically talking about uh this is a quote from Jeff Patterson. Uh he needs to learn how to play the game. He has skill <laughs> and he might score 40 someday. But if you're going to hover around the 20 goal mark, you better learn to play at both ends of the ice with like scathing, well, especially a considering harsh. a little harsh, like and kind of wild when you consider that literally at the beginning of the year, Travis Green was talking about how he saw Hoaglander as a jack of all trades guy who could literally a spark, bring energy plug, and who spark could, plug who could kick off or kick start any line in literally, his lineup literally the ultimate compliment you can get from a hockey coach like yes. like it's not even no hyperbole there that's straight up what a coach says when they like when you're their favorite player you're and, a guy they can trust if you yeah will. yeah and you know to like to to Boudreaux's credit like yeah Hoaglander hasn't looked super good he's had a really struggled in a lot of games like I'm actually working on an article for Canucks Army kind of talking about like whose stock has kind of like risen and fell, fallen during the the road trip a little bit Mm-hmm. Um, and like kind of like grading performance a little bit. Uh, Hoaglander was going to be pretty low yeah. um, on that list. But the thing was, and I wanted to I wanted to talk about this for a bit, is Hoaglander is kind of a guy who I think when you do what 
Boudreaux has done, where he's kind of stuffed him in the fourth line for a long time and just kind of like left him there. Mm-hmm. I think that's actually a bad, that's a bad coaching decision as far as what Hoaglander is good at. I think Nils Hoaglander is the type of guy that performs best when you give him a prime job to do and you basically go, you're the most important guy. I need you to go and do this really important, play on this really important role on the, with these really important teammates. I think he's a guy that relishes playing with the best players and being put in a tougher spot, playing with a guy like an Elias Pettersson rather than, say, uh, a Justin Dowling or, or a Jason Dickinson. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's one of those things where, like, if you put him in your top six, even if he's not playing like a top six guy I th- at the time, I think you're going to get better results out of him than when you stuff him in the fourth. Now, you can make the argument, of course, that, like, a guy – who needs to be able to play in the fourth line. Like that needs to happen. If you're going to stick in a lineup and you're not playing well, you might need to stick. Like there was already talk that like, uh, had Connor Garland not gotten, uh, been put in COVID protocol that Hoaglander might've ended up as a healthy scratch at some point. And, but it's like looking at what Hoaglander brings to the table. I was kind of like watching his games and thinking like, I think they're kind of like, I don't think they're helping him out by, putting him on the by lowering his minutes like yeah yeah, that seems like counterintuitive like like this is a like a high octane player who like creates a lot of offense but gives up a lot of offense but like if you let him fly he's going to probably score more often than he gives up goals like reducing his ice time and sidling him like like you said like on the fourth line like with like tanner pearson and tyler mott for shifts like it doesn't really gel it doesn't really like it's not going to ever lead to like positive results yeah, like, and that's not true, and that's not true for everybody, right? Like, it's not a mm-hmm. case of, like, like there are some guys very much that, like, you need to give them sheltered minutes. You need to keep them at, like, a certain, like, at a threshold of, like, seven or eight minutes. You're going to get your best effort out of them that way if you play them too much. You start seeing more mistakes and more issues and more giveaways. With mm-hmm. with Hoaglander, the, the comparison I honestly kept coming back to in my mind— uh, cause my mind always goes to TV was like the whole, uh, <laughs> thing with, uh, with, uh, Tom Haverford, uh, Aziz Ansari's character in Parks and Rec, how, when they stuck him in like filing, they stuck him, the guy who's always like out to like impress everybody. Like they stuck him in a filing room, just like do going over, like did go trying to digitize, like uh, and catalog things. Mm-hmm. They started get, he did worse. And Ron Swanson, Nick, Nick Offerman's character was like, Tom is a guy who needs to be performing and needs to be kind of put out in in a spotlight to do his best you're not going to get your best out of him putting him in a where you know like a warehouse room in a filing room you and that was something they figured out as they went along uh hoaglander's kind of like that if you give him if you give him tough like tough jobs to do in front in the most high pressure situations you're gonna get better results out of him than putting him in low pressure situations i think i could be wrong yeah i don't coach but like that's kind of what I see from Hoaglander and what I think and where I think they can make where I think tonight kind of proved that maybe they can get better results out of him playing him in a spot alongside Pud Colson, who's another kind of spark plug plug guy, and Pedersen, who's obviously just red hot now and on an absolute tear over his last couple of games. Yeah, he's he strikes me as a type that like would benefit more from ice time, just like even if like you're throwing up against like top competition, like even if he struggles, like I feel like he's going to learn more by playing against that top competition than he is going to be by getting sheltered and like getting crushed. Like you'd rather him getting crushed against the top than the bottom just makes more sense that way. So yeah. I'm looking forward to your article on Canucks army.com slash uh, <laughs> Niels Hoglander underscore sucks <laughs> underscore. Niels Hoglander now. second coming of Gretzky question mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, it could happen. Um, it could happen. It could La- uh, last few things on uh, the Canucks before we uh, move on to some of the uh, spicier news in the uh, NHL that has erupted in the last couple of days. Uh, <laughs> COVID updates. I know everyone loves to hear about COVID, but Bo Horvat, obviously in COVID protocol, he'll be miss Thursday's game against Florida as he has to quarantine um, for the next five days in the United States before he's a- eligible to fly back to Canada. And even then he's probably going to take extra time because the last person that quarantined in America before coming to Canada still had to quarantine another 10 days when they arrived and they weren't expecting it. They were pissed. And that was Brock Besser. Um, 
you still have Halax in COVID protocol. And because of that, we saw Spencer Martin get recalled from Abbotsford and sent into the backup spot. Uh, do you think he's going to get a game? I well, I they asked me about this on uh, on six fifty on Saturday. They asked me, "Do you think Martin gets in?" And I mm-hmm. uh, and specifically uh, in regards to the Sunday game uh, against the Capitals, and I said that yeah, I think they would, especially because like of what you've been telling me about how he's played in Abbotsford and how yeah. he's been clearly their best goaltender this year. Uh, with Silovs coming up the rear and playing pretty good uh, of late himself, um, but. Uh, I do think Martin should get in. Like, I, I think you'd be crazy not to give him a game if you can, especially because, like, it's one of those cases where, like, as we talked about before, the Canucks are in a spot where there's house money kind of at, on the table in front of them. They don't have to worry too much about, oh, we got to be a, we got to be going straight for the playoffs. Every game counts. Like, you're not in that spot right now, and that's fine, which means it gives you an opportunity to give a guy like Spencer Martin a game here and there, here or there, if you've got a chance to. Uh, and until Halak comes back, you've got one. So I say, mm-hmm. like, you're looking at, like, looking at the schedule, like, Edmonton might be your good, might be your game there. Uh, Winnipeg, like, there's a couple teams in there who haven't been necessarily playing particularly great hockey that you could uh, feed a feed a game to, give them a give them a shot against some opponents. Maybe maybe the Oilers are a tough one just because McDavid and Drysaddle are who they are, yeah. but like the, there's the blues as well, who've been do- doing pretty well. If you want to give them a bit of a challenge, that's in more in the Canucks wheelhouse as mm-hmm. a team that they routinely do pretty well against. And they line up quite well, quite nicely uh, in games against. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Martin should get a game. I did want to ask you not only about that as well, but also like in terms of like Demko, he had the bit of the, he had a tough night against Carolina. I think mm-hmm. that was just due to the fact that he was clearly not expecting to play. He got thrown into a game that he was not gonna. He was not originally gonna start. Yeah. Um. But for a guy who played five games, all five games in this road trip, in pretty short fashion, how do you think he did? Uh, in that time span, I, I think he started out really strong. Um, I actually don't think he played particularly that good in against Nashville. Obviously, he only let in one goal, but I think that was actually kind of one of the weakest goals he's let in all season. Yeah, and I'd agree. a part of me was kind of like, you know, is this like if a tie if like if Nashville wasn't tired in theory, if that was like a Florida, they would have pounced on the fact that Thatcher Demko wasn't on top of his game. But because Nashville was tired, they kind of got the one, but didn't really ever have like the, enough momentum to generate some serious scoring t- chances. Like the Canucks D really did a good job at preventing those uh, net front chances, uh, screens, and all that. So a part of me worries that he's going to get run into the dirt like Jacob Markstrom style when Jeff Ward played him like 27 games straight or whatever it was and then injured him. Yeah. Yeah. And a part of me was kind of like surprised actually that he started against Nashville because, you know, Nashville was missing a ton of guys out of their lineup, including they weren't playing Soros. And so it was kind of like, you know, the team has dug themselves such a hole anyway with like how poor they were in the start. Boudreaux knows that Jim Rutherford knows that they don't really gain anything by running Demko into the dirt besides risking an injury to him. So why wouldn't you play Spencer Martin or maybe Mikey DiPietro gets a game like they're both on the taxi squad technically. So why wouldn't you try either guy really in a game? Because like, if anything, I probably would have started Mikey DiPietro against Nashville just to see what he can do. Yeah. Like you get you, you worst case scenario, Demko has to come in after a period because he gets lit up. Same thing with yeah. Martin. Worst case scenario is that uh, Demko gets a, a half a night off. Like yeah. it's not the end of the world. Now you come home with like a bit of momentum yeah. and you're kind of in a situation where you're going to need to get DiPietro games. Like he barely played in the AHL as it was. And he looked rough. He only got called up after finally having a good game. And he only was called up because they needed a body in the taxi squad for goalies. So yeah, he's stuck right now. He's yeah. And the, and the only way that he can actually get games right now is if Martin or Demko test positive for COVID or get injured. Which it's a, it's a rough situation. And obviously this would depend on, you know, Halak still 
taking another like five days to come back from COVID protocol, but mm-hmm. chances are like the, the odds are like Demko is not going to get injured or COVID in the next night. Right. Like knock on wood that that doesn't happen, but God, please, you would have no. preferred a scenario where Di Pietro or Martin actually get a game and Demko gets a bit of relief. So he's not completely burnt to the crisp by the time this uh, upcoming uh, homestand comes, especially when it starts against Florida. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, no pressure. Demko. Now that's the big thing is you're basically already guaranteed that Demko is going to play the six, a sixth game in a row. Yeah. And that's not including, I believe what had been prior to that. Cause he had played, um, he played the Seattle game or was that Halak as well? No, that would have been, no, that was Demko. Uh, that Halak Demko, hasn't yeah. played since the Halak has not played since December 30th. He has not played a game. Yeah. Um, and obviously right now that's a different story. But yeah, like Demko's Demko ne- is going to need a night off eventually. And, you know, there are a lot of a tough games coming up. Yeah, I think, I, and I should clarify, um, I said Thursday for the Panthers Canucks. That's actually Friday. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, then they go back to on Sunday against the Blues. I think you got to find a way specifically in a home game because they're, they're going to be so far and few between get a home game in with Spencer Martin or DPH or whoever you feel get yeah. just one of them. Maybe both, maybe both. Maybe you find a way to stick both of them in a game here or there. Mm -hmm. But like try and get them in before you have to go back on the road for a long time, which kind of which uh, actually I'm seeing February games on the schedule right now, uh, which I don't think were there before. Mm -hmm. Uh, If I want, uh, I'm going to here, I'll double check and quickly make sure that those are not that those are accurate. (laughs) Uh, But uh, right now, uh, according to the NHL schedule, uh, the Canucks will play in Nashville again on February 1st. Uh, and then the only three other games scheduled in that timeline right now are a game on the 24th at home against the Flames a and two games on the road on the 27th against the Rangers and the 28th uh, in New Jersey against the Devils. So those are your four games so far that are scheduled in that uh, in that period. I don't I, I think those are the only ones that are totally penciled in and new from a previous uh time and po- time uh t- point right. um there does appear to be a uh a seattle game i don't know if that was already s- slated in the schedule or not mm-hmm. um a slate a, a home game against the kraken on the 26th of april i think that was there actually um but yeah so there are four games but like very spaced out in February, there's bound to be more included in that mixture. Yeah. But again, you're looking at a case already where right now, at the very least, you're going to be going back on the road for four games in a row. So you better get your goal. You better get your, uh, your young guys into a game at home. while you got them. You got Florida, you got St. Louis and you got Edmonton. Try and find a way to put them into one of those. Yeah. We we're all for more goalies. Get, give, give Demko, Demko a break. Don't, don't run him into the dirt. On, uh, when he's having a decent season, like just give please him a break. don't run your heart trophy goaltender winning goaltender, <laughs> your future heart trophy winning goaltender all star, your yeah, NHL you all star Thatcher MFing Demko, yeah, <laughs> mother flipping Demko. Uh, all right, let's get into the real drama of the week the yes. actual story. The only the- reason any of you are here, um, Jim Matheson <laughs> versus Leon Dreisidel, the, oh, the dawn of justice. Um, so for those that I... don't know, uh, the Edmonton Oilers held an availability today. Uh, yesterday it was Connor McDavid after the team's loss to the Ottawa Senators. Uh, today it was Leon Dreisaitl and uh, longtime sports reporter Jim Matheson of the um, Edmonton uh, Beat uh, asked a little bit of a question. Just, you know, how... Uh, Oh, I guess you got the clip queued up. Uh, let's uh, let's add it. Let's uh, let's try and play it and see if we can actually hear it. Yeah, I believe you can hear this. So, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, so this is the uh, Jim Matheson. What does he? He works for the Edmonton Journal. Am I? Am I wrong? Is that? Is that? Is that accurate? I, I we believe should get you. that. We should get that correct. Um, but either way, Jim Matheson. Uh, w- yes, yes. Uh, a journalist for the um, for the uh, uh, Edmonton Journal. Um, he has been covering the Oilers since, uh, they were in the The WHA in 1973. So yes, basically the dawn of time for the Oilers. Um, notoriously has, has had some very funny, uh, (laughs) some very funny quotes, uh, on specifically on Twitter over a long, over 
his many years on the beat, uh, as, lo- as well as many other Oilers have. And I'm going to play the clip. This was from today, I believe, pre – not a, a morning – just a regular practice, I believe, for the Oilers because they didn't play today, I don't yeah. think. Um, this is an exchange between him and Leon Dreisaitl. Feel free to let me know if you want me to pause at any point. Everyone should be able to hear this. Yeah. Uh, let's let's uh, let's let's listen in, shall we? Lots of reasons for why the owners are playing the way they are in terms of winning and losing. What do you think is the number one reason for the losses now? Is there is there one thing that you in your own mind you're saying we got to get better at that? Yeah, we ha- we have to get better at everything. Would you like to expand on that? No. Nope. <laughs> you can do that. You know everything. Why are you so pissy? <laughs> Why are you so oh pissy? No, I'm just answering your yeah, question. Yeah, you are. Uh, I asked you a question. I gave you an answer. Oh, my God. Not very good one. <laughs> okay. I have one more for you. Leon, you show your frustration <laughs> on the ice. Last game against Ottawa. Is that a good thing when you show it so the other team knows you're frustrated? Yeah, it's a great thing, for sure. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Oh, Lots of fuck. reasons. Oh, so, oh, my God. There's So there's a lot to unpack there. Um, it's... Oh, my God. There's um, something so beautiful about this entire exchange because you yeah. and I are on the same page here. We're, we're both understanding that Leon Dreisaitl is – a complete a menace baby to society, about the situation. And like Jim he's, Matheson can do no wrong. He is a G- Jim Matheson. Matheson has a history of going against the players and not going against the old boys club. So I understand fan, uh, fan interpretation of like where this question is coming from from Jim Matheson. But what he's asking isn't really like that brash. It isn't that rude or off the cuff. It's a very generic like hockey question of just you know what do you guys need to do to get better? And Dreisaitl. I get that he's clearly frustrated, but he answers it in a very petulant way where he's just like, he, all he had to say was uh, we need to be better. And then when he says, when Jim Matheson asks, can care to expand on that? Leon Dreisaitl could take the high road and just be like, no, but he throws in the, <laughs> you have all the answers part, which is just like a, which is that. Okay. That is, that is the something that a guy says when he's been dealing with the same coworker for the last, like what now six years has he been an it, oiler now? Like his passive aggressiveness at its finest. Yes. Where you're just like, I don't want to fucking deal with you. You're such a smart ass. I fucking can't stand you. Yeah, it's, it's the, that's what I'm saying. Brooksy. What from it when Tortorella was Rangers coach dealing with uh, Larry Brooks on a daily basis. Like that's what it was. Right. And the normal response to from the journalist normally in any other situation would just be like, to okay, back off. my second question is this. But instead, Jim Matheson, who's very fed up with the petulant attitude of Leon, as he should be. It is a very like uh, flippant yeah. response from Leon. It's just like, just just answer and say no. You don't need to like be like, I have all the answers. Like, fuck off. I'm just answering. I'm just doing my job. And so Madison asked, why are you so pissy? <laughs> which is which is so fucking funny because that, it's like it come like if it if it wasn't coming from like a 40 year tenured journalist who's been in the game for as long as he have, like it wouldn't be as funny, but because it's from this like old ass curmudgeon, it's so funny. It's, it's amazing. Real funny. It's, and it's, yeah. And when like Leon's like I'm not pissy, which is like, fuck off. I loved, I love, I love that. Like, okay. I love this whole clip. Like the whole thing is great. Everything about it is so funny. We are team. We are team. Anything that makes hockey funny. Yeah. We're all for it. And I don't think, I think anyone taking this as like a Jim Matheson's an asshole or Leon Dreisaitl's the problem. Like, I think you're missing the point. Yes. The point is this is great. And it's funny as fuck. And that's yes. all it needs to be. Yeah. It's just, it's just yeah. funny. It's just drama. Yeah. It's so childish on both person's part. Yeah. It's, this so, isn't... it's two guys just fed up with their jobs. It's so amazing. Yeah. This isn't like la- like the, like the Nathan McKinnon thing where the, or the, the guy or asked the, the worst or whatever. question. Yeah. Or asked the, wor- oh yeah, the, the Voracek one, which that literally the only thing this clip was missing was like, darnell nurse or like um i'm trying to or like zach cassian sitting next to him like drinking and drinking a water bottle and just going like 
oh, like right next yeah, to it, just yeah. reacting in 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 the in real time to that happening, being like, oh, we're doing this, okay, like, uh, because that would have been fantastic. I mean, we kind of got a, um, I don't want to say like an exact same situation here. But like in Vancouver on the weekend, I think it was, I think, I think IMAC asked a couple questions to Pedersen and you could visibly hear him say on the, Pedersen say on the call, uh, and like I knew it'd be questions like this, like the whole, like that, th like that kind of a thing about his like cold streak kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's, that's it. Like that comes with it. Right. I will say like, it, it starts off like totally fine. Like the initial question that Jim Matheson asked is totally fine. Like there's nothing wrong with that first question. And in a way, I'm also – and yeah, like in the same case, it's like uh, even though like – even though Dreisaitl's being like totally like um, passive aggressive, I'm almost just kind of like, eh, that's fine. Like he – like I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, he doesn't need to – he doesn't need to give you a great quote. He totally mm. – it's not – he, he is under no obligation to give you a great – like this tremendous in-depth quote. No. Yeah, exactly. He, do, he is under no – he does not have to do that if he doesn't want to. And – like passive aggressive or not, I'm like, okay, that's how it goes sometimes. Whatever. You caught him on a bad day. That happens. For Matheson to come back with the <laughs> why are you so pissy? And then it's not even just that. It's that whenever he what where he where Matheson loses me is when he says, when I ask you a question and making it about himself. It's like, okay, it's one thing <laughs> if you're like, if he's being like this to everybody. And you're kind of calling him out a little bit, but it's because yeah. you he only did it to you. And you're and you're whining about yeah. it. Where I'm like, oh, that's yeah, that's a very bad look for you. Uh, it was it was either way. I think both I think both guys like both guys handled it badly at the end of the day. Awesome. And, and it's very funny. I yeah I I love that when after asking him like where he says yeah you're you're being pissy and he's like no I'm not <laughs> and he hits him back with the yeah you are. Like yeah, like they might as well like, just been like the I'm rubber, you're glue. Yeah, like, exactly. That's what I thought. It, like it's like two five year olds like being like, yeah, well, you're a stinky doo doo head. Yeah, and like that's the best they can go. come up with. Like they're yeah. just like two idiots. Why are you like, such a Cody? Why are you such a stinky, ugly dork? Like yeah. Well, yeah. I heard you smell. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, you eat poop for a living, oh. idiot what Who what that? Yeah, yeah like exactly i heard that i heard by the swings that you like yeah, exactly. that's literally it's, what this is it's yeah. so if you, funny yeah. though uh, we played the clip but um if you get a chance check our youtube channel or just like seek out the yeah, video go watch itself. the youtube channel yeah go come because our, we yes, have the we have the video playing but like the the facial reactions of leon are so funny because he's like, so done the with smirk it. and the yeah, smirk because he knows he, he's being like he knows he's being a fucking he knows, shithead. That's the other part is Leon Dreisaitl knows what he's doing in this yeah, case, he which is completely does. And it's whereas amazing. Jim Matheson has just kind of lost the plot at the end there. Mm -hmm. Like the whole thing of like asking, like, do you think it's good that you're showing your frustration? And of course, Leon Dreisaitl is already like, okay, I yeah, know how that's really good. Yeah. You no, know, it's great. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's it's two, <laughs> it's two grown adults embarrassing themselves on a national scale, and I love <laughs> so, it. Go check I it mean, out, folks. That's I mean, is that not just the Edmonton Oilers at a whole? Oh, for sure. Now? That's exactly like what they it is. lost to Ottawa on the weekend in just the most embarrassing fashion. Like yeah. we were watching that game. Like straight up, the Canucks are probably going to catch the Oilers. Am I wrong? Like they're gonna pass them. I it don't think that seems like they're in that's... free fall. So long as they don't pick up a goalie, they're in free fall and nothing's going to save God, it. Yeah. Yeah. No, like I, like, I don't think that's going to like, it's not going to necessarily translate into a playoff spot for the Canucks. Cause keep in mind yeah, they're that so behind, there's three right? spots they're, like it's the, th the Oilers aren't even in one of the three Pacific division spots. Correct. They're just in a wild card. Now it's Vegas. It's, I believe it's Vegas, Anaheim and Calgary in those first three. Yeah. And I don't know whether I don't think you're catching any of those guys, maybe Anaheim, but even then it's still iffy. Yeah. Um, Edmonton, I think right now, the way that they're playing and the mentality and things like this, I'm watching them and I'm like, oh God, the Canucks are going to pass them within like two weeks. Like yeah, I, for... like I'm looking at that game against the Oilers on what next Wednesday. And I'm like, yeah. oh, it's a sending a lamb to the slaughter. The Canucks are about to absolutely crush these guys. Like yeah. it, it's I... not going to be funny. For the memes, I hope they just keep losing because 
I love I love the comedy it's in gonna be the NHL very, and hockey. It's yeah, it's gonna be real need. funny when Evander Kane makes his Oilers debut in Vancouver, <laughs> yeah. and then the Canucks just win six to nothing. Actually, you, how was Chris Gear's first uh, article was about the ramifications yes. of Evander Kane uh, potentially uh, jumping into an NHL team. Uh, yes. sooner rather than later seeing how that goes i'm very we, we're gonna have to get him on the show we're gonna have to get him we're on gonna, the show as well well he isn't adverse to doing podcasts as we oh, said yeah. he's going to be on the canucks conversation tomorrow i guess today if you're listening to this now at 3 p.m uh so check mm-hmm. that out too because i'm sure it'll be interesting his article for daily face off was pretty good too uh yeah. it's very like clearly written by like a lawyer because it's a lot of I don't know. You just tell it's like a lawyer wrote this. It's yes. kind of very oh, funny. Oh, yes. We've been learning no. about that in school, how to not, how you don't, how um, if you're not like a lawyer or a cop, there's different language that you've got to use as a journalist. And like, obviously, Chris Gear is different. He's a guy that's worked, that's whole thing is he's worked in, in front offices and as mm-hmm. like a lawyer in business. So he's going to, the articles he writes are going to be very, very different from like, say what I'm giving you or what Quads or Faber or anybody else in, or Cody or anybody else in the market is going to give you. I uh, I DM'd Quads and I said, ask him to break down the Tucker Pullman contract extension oh, no. for his next article so just, we can get some justification on that one. Tea. Just spell the tea. Eddie Lack spilled some tea today. I don't know if we have time to talk about that that one today. Uh, I, I want to give that one some room to breathe, breathe a bit room. because I, That's feel a good idea. Like, I feel like there's going to be more developments there's on that more to because... It. Yeah. Uh, uh, shit heel andrew walker decided to step in and call him a liar um, oh boy oh boy which is andrew always i mean the guy the guy who the guy who said that elias petterson belongs in the ahl literally a week ago literally a week ago and like then said straight he was up meme, said he was memeing and it's our fault for taking it seriously oh god there the is... guy that carried water for fucking the the Benning guy that... and Wisebrod for like years saying these guys could do no wrong like the that guy, that guy famously, yeah, like, like made it god he made it so clear what that he hated vancouver like no shit like, i've never seen anything like it where i'm like this guy clearly hates like the entire fan base he does what, not like any part of it like, one, of, one of my favorite lines from the red letter media uh phantom menace review is um it's good to spite your audience and that's everything that's that is Andrew Walker to a T is anytime he would tweet about the team. It was like he loathed the fact that he was talking about this team to a fan base that he felt was below him. He I tried zero to, time for him. Yeah, he tried no to do the WWE like heel move in a market that isn't New York City where that kind of works. Like there and are some markets where that. Yeah, there are some markets where that works, where that actually does work really well. Like the whole thing, I think like, I think that's like Mike Francesa's bit in New York, in New York radio is that Mm -hmm. he's like the heel guy and like, and that works for some markets. Um, Vancouver, that's not a thing. We don't, because (laughs) of how long we've had to deal with like larger national media, giving, not giving the Canucks enough attention. They just want people who are going to be honest and talk about the hockey team. And boy, uh, that did not work out for him. Uh, like, we don't have to talk to spend time about him really talking about him yeah, that much. Re- uh. I know. Let's let's not waste our time. Um, but yeah, if you want to really be a heel, you basically need to do the Mister Booth thing, where you fake everybody out <laughs> oh, and don't comment good. on anything else. You just piss people off. That's what a real heel is: is someone who is an enemy to both sides. Whenever, whenever a heel doesn't work, yeah. is if you're acquiescing to millionaires yeah. in power. You're just you just look like an asshole. Yeah, like there are some times where I, well, I like Boothie post something, and I'm just like, and I'm like, oh, you probably shouldn't have done that. That's actually gonna not. That might a- actually negatively impact the Canucks in the, in the because you tweeted that kind of thing, right? Like or, whenever he like when he does like a we have hired this person, like person that we all really like we like or something. It's like, oh god, they're not gonna yeah, do like, that now. <laughs> like, yeah. Why would you do this? Or oh no, <laughs> or when he makes like I don't like when he I didn't as funny as it is when he uh, did the the fake Artemi Panarin uh oh, article God, piece. that one's like, never gonna die that, that one's one. so funny yeah. when it's funny really when, good really it's funny good. when professionals think it's real and they until, try to build like storylines about it until but they then start when it's actually it like seriously. like i'm sure i'm sure drance doesn't care because he just no no gets not he faces nothing but shit in his dms you like just, all day 
But you it's just like, know Artemi Panarin's going to get asked about that at some point down the line by, by some somebody idiot who doesn't understand it, and he's and like, Panarin's what? literally going to look at him like, "What are you talking about?" Like, like yeah. not even know what's going on. But it's like not fair to like Drance, who's now like if he was already getting shit for like his takes in general, now it's like, oh, here's here's more. You're getting shit for something that is ammo real. that's not real. <laughs> true. <laughs> Good luck. Oh no, I'm just like, oh, funny in the moment, funny until somebody starts taking it and as actual truth. Exactly. Like I think that was another Oilers writer who like yes, uh... seriously, and then blocked Booth <laughs> <laughs> over it when he found out he had been got. He had Those are got. I will give him credit. Those are my favorite things. But when he does the uh, the heel <laughs> shit is when he immediately retweets the uh, or the picture of the person blocking him right after. Like, like that's really funny. Person, the legitimate yeah. like person who's got like all the credentials, who takes it like to be real and doesn't know his bit. Yeah, like that's very, that's pretty good. good. I appreciate that. But anyway, yes. we'll close out this episode quickly with a uh, just a little kudos to Willie O'Ree, who uh, yes. finally got his jersey retired by the Boston Bruins. Boo. Uh, tonight in, uh, I believe, Boston, obviously. Yeah, yes. uh, A lot of teams around the league, too, were uh, donning the number 22 decal on their helmets and on the ice surfaces as well. Um, one of the things that I didn't know about, but I saw this in a tweet, which blew my fucking brain, but through his entire 80-game career in the NHL, apparently he was blind in one eye. Yep. The entire time. What Told the me fuck? never play again. He did, and he did. He made the damn NHL. Like, yeah, like holy cow. Yeah, kudos to him. Long time yeah. coming. Um, I think he's in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Was yes, he, in he is. Last year? There was a long time. Before? Yeah, he got in the same year as Gary Bettman, and that was a big issue uh... for a lot of people. <sighs> Which, yeah, fair. And the big worry was that, like, oh, my God, because he's an old, he's an old, older guy, obviously. Yeah. Like, the big worry was that he wasn't going to get in before he passed away, and that was going to be a huge loss if he didn't get to be there to see his own like induction because you knew what's gonna happen you knew mm -hmm. that eventually he was going to get eventually it. they'd finally do the right like, thing you didn't want it where it was going to be like pat quinn where he didn't get into the hall of fame i don't think until after he passed away or something yeah. along those lines like it was one of those things where it was like shoot you really missed the opportunity and with O'Ree, same thing with the jersey retirement where it's kind of that one was maybe like not so necessarily a guarantee because like as far as like NHL teams are concerned, usually retired jerseys are specifically reserved for like, oh, you were one of the greatest players to ever play. You scored the most points, that kind of thing. Willie mm -hmm. O'Ree is a hero and a hockey hero for a different reason, just being the guy who broke the NHL's color barrier and being the first for black sure. player in the NHL history. And God, it, it was good to see everybody. Like it wasn't just like an, a big, like a, a Boston exclusive thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was just like, like everybody yeah. was like, yeah, this is a long yeah. time coming. Let's celebrate yeah. it. Yeah. Wonderful. Those kinds of I movements believe... are so much better. Yeah. Yeah. I believe the black history tour for hockey is coming through, uh, going across the NHL as well. There's going to be like a tour going on, uh, oh, yeah. not only talking about Willie O'Ree, but all uh, other black players that have uh, come through the NHL and played as well. Nice. Um, there's the hockey diversity Alliance did their own thing, uh, separate. That's like with the tape, the, the Budweiser blackout hate, mm -hmm. I believe is what the tape is called. Yes. Um, remember from remember correctly. Yes. And, uh, yeah. And that, that, that tour, by the way, is stopping in Vancouver, I believe in March. I don't, Ooh. uh, I think I got to check the dates on it. I'm sure we can look it up in, uh, in the, in the meantime, but, uh, yeah, it was really good. The one thing I'll say is I was sad that he couldn't be there in person i watched the i don't know i don't know if you, did you watch the did you watch the retirement ceremony uh at all did you watch uh no i got home and i straight up straight went straight to the canucks game so i was up to date for tonight's episode fair enough um but uh yeah i watched it he couldn't actually attend he didn't actually attend it because um they uh they made the decision the his family made the decision because they were like uh, with COVID, with Omicron, we don't want to we don't want to risk traveling. So we're we'll come event we'll come eventually, but we're gonna do it. He did a, his whole speech and everything over live over like a video uh, oh, nice. over video feed. So like his, he was watching, but like from over like uh, digitally. Um, but it was very nice to like see. I believe it was, like Anson Carter went out there with a a number of local hockey players, uh, like minor hockey players, uh, to uh put his banner in the Raptors. It was a, it was very oh, yeah. touching. It's a very nice moment. He's long deserved it um yeah. yeah so it was a very beautiful moment hopefully uh and hopefully it encourages more us to like everybody to you know push harder for making hockey more uh inclusive and making it more of a and making it uh, a better a more open place for everybody absolutely um on that note 
thank you everybody for listening to uh tonight's episode i know it was very adhd a bit uh in the middle section after the uh the canucks uh game review but hey that's what Honestly, you get when you listen to our Beastcast episodes. But this is I one think of our one best of, episodes. I was going to say, it was our most ADHD episode, but also somehow the most organized and uh, yeah. coherent episode. Which I agree. Sense. That's totally accurate. That is le- incredibly accurate to, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It was the most organized ADHD we've ever had. Um, otherwise, folks, I am Cody Sievertson. You can follow me on Twitter at Cody Sievertson. My website, ahlnuxharvest.com. I recently posted the uh, Abbotsford Canucks one or sorry two to one shootout win over the ontario rain they're back in action this saturday and sunday i should probably be on both uh game reviews i actually might do only one because on one of those days i am going to meet my possible puppy our our first crease cast dog very excited yes i'm super hype it's going to ruin my life and my house and my sleep schedule and i can't fucking wait lachlan where can the fine folks find your work, sir? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Lock at the Crease. You can also find me oh, uh, over at Canucks Army, I, uh, CanucksArmy.com. I write there quite frequently. I put out an article over the weekend talking about Elias Pettersson's big breakout game and how that can kind of be a turning point for him. Uh, I saw some people being very negative, being like, it's only two goals. And I'm like, know. excuse me, <laughs> it's Elias Pettersson, goddammit. <laughs> like, what? Did you- it's it's Elias Pettersson, and did you see the way he was playing prior to the two goals? Like, come on, yeah. be excited. I think one one person was definitely trolling because they were like, because they're like, this is we're not talking about Tyler Mott here. We're talking about <laughs> so and I'm oh, like, yeah. okay, that's funny. That's I can pretty get on funny. board with that. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, and then I'm working on an article uh talking about the road trip and which players kind of uh best perf- perform best, which players underperformed a little bit, and uh yeah, going over that stuff. You can also uh, do, uh, check out our, yeah, the Creasecast Patreon. Uh, make sure you subscribe on our YouTube channel. Uh, make, leave a good review. Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Helps yeah, us out a lot. We appreciate those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, folks, thanks for listening. And we'll catch you on the Friday edition, the the weekend edition, the weekend update, if you will, uh, <laughs> yeah. with Lachlan and uh, hopefully Jacob, where he'll uh, give us more juicy details about Ryan Beach's shopping habits. Till then, folks. <laughs> Thank you for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.